C5, C6, this bulge. You've had an MRI of your neck because of chronic neck pain or maybe numbness and tingling down the arm or other spasms in your neck and shoulders and you were diagnosed with a C5, C6 disc bulge. Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Walter Salubro and in this video, I'm gonna teach you what a C5, C6 disc bulge is, what a cervical or neck disc bulge is in general, the prevalence of disc bulges in the neck, how they're caused, the symptoms that are associated with it, and more importantly, different types of treatments that you can use to avoid surgery of C5, C6 disc bulge. Helping you relieve pain, conquer stress, and supercharge your health the chiropractic way. And be sure to click on that subscribe button and also that notification bell so you don't miss out on fresh new content that I put out on a weekly basis just like this. And if you have suffered from a C5, C6 disc bulge or related symptoms or diagnosed with C5, C6 disc bulge or any of the disc bulges in the neck, I wanna hear about it. Let me know about your experience in the comments below, what you've done and what's worked or hasn't worked for you. So the first thing I wanna show you is that the neck in relationship to the rest of the spine is actually very different. It's the smallest portion of anatomy in terms of the spine on the neck. The vertebra are a lot smaller compared to the middle back, which is the thoracic area, and the lumbar spine, the lower back. In the neck, there's seven bones called vertebra, and in between you'll see the discs. So the discs also are a lot smaller. Why is that? Because even though they absorb impact and load and weight, they're only absorbing the load and weight essentially of the head and the neck, upper neck area. Whereas the lumbar spine is absorbing the load and weight of your entire torso, rib cage, shoulder, girdle, and neck. So the actual vertebra of the neck, the cervical spine, are shaped quite differently. That actually prevents uh, cervical disc bulges, such as C5, C6 disc bulge, from occurring as common uh, compared to the lower back area. Also, the neck, the cervical vertebra of the neck, they have some unique processes that are not find, found in any other parts of the spine, and they're called untinted processes. So if we look at a closer look of what these vertebrae look like, so this will be an example here. So here's the neck region, there's seven vertebrae in the neck, and uh, you'll see that um, this is the vertebral body over here, the disc would actually sit on there. Right, so here's an example of a disc. Now this is not the, the neck disc, but the disc is comprised of an outer strong annulus fibrosis and an inner nucleus pulposus, well contained and very strong. So the same is, is also in the, in the actual area of the cervical spine, but over here on the lateral aspect of the vertebral body, on the superior side, which is the top part, you see it also over here, there are certain processes that are called uncinate processes, and uncinate is essentially a word that means hooked. So they actually ha have an elevated hooked process here that essentially contains the actual disc in the cervical spine and prevents it from being bulged, uh, and, and, the, and not as common as the bulging of, of, the, of the discs because of these uncinate processes compared to the lumbar spine, where the lumbar spine lack right there, the lumbar spine lack those uncinate processes and you see more commonly, more common disc bulges in the lower back compared to the neck. Um, because of they're protected by these uncinate processes and as well there's more load impact on the lower back compared to the neck as well. So even though the cervical spine, which is the neck, have these unique uncinate processes that protect the disc from bulging out compared to other areas of the spine, disc bulges do occur in the neck region or the cervical spine. And I just wanted to see what the prevalence was. So according to um, two authors who did a systematic literature review, a qualitative systematic review of the literature, uh, this, these are authors D'Antoni and Croft, um, and this is from the Journal of Whiplash and Related Disorders, Volume 5, 2006, Issue 1. And they essentially uh, said from their literature review, they looked at all this, of this data, and uh, this is interesting because this is an, an asymptomatic subjects or, or people without any symptoms whatsoever. And they said that the prevalence of uh, cervical disc herniations in asymptomatic subjects of less than 40 years of age is anywhere from 3% to 10%. So up to 10%, as low as 3%, uh, anywhere uh, uh, for people that are under the age of 40. And then it increases to 20% uh, in subjects up to the age of 54 years of age. 
and they said that this actually increases with age. So the prevalence increases with age from 5% to 35% in subjects between the age of 40 and 64. So they do occur in people uh, and they do cause problems, which I'll get into. And also, I'll also discuss what the causes are uh, predominantly of the uh, disc bulges like C5, C6 disc bulges. And as well, um, I'm gonna also go on, on in this video uh, show you um, and give you some ideas of some treatment options that you can do to help correct and treat uh, symptoms and, and uh, conditions associated with C5, C6. Now before I do all that, let me show you some anatomy on an x-ray of a normal spine, cervical spine, and then an abnormal spine because it'll help put into context some uh, reasons why disc bulges occur. And uh, the next portion or segment after this, I'm gonna show you what it looks like also on an MRI. So take a look at this. This is a poster. Uh, this is courtesy of Ideal Spine or uh, the Chiropractic Biophysics Group. This poster is a great po poster and they do a lot of good work on corrective chiropractic care. So this part here of the poster, you'll You'll see a normal cervical spine. This person is looking in that direction. So an x-ray is taken from here. Here's the back of the head. The jaw would be here. These are the vertebra. In between are the disc spaces. Now you don't see discs on an x-ray study, but you do see the spaces, nice wide spaces. For the most part, it means a healthy disc. Of course, we need an MRI to confirm the soft tissues such as disc. But and nonetheless, you have a nice cervical lordosis, which is called uh, a nice curve in the neck. Uh, we know the exact measurements based on research. There's less likelihood of disc damage and disc degeneration and spinal degeneration in a healthy normal alignment of the neck. Now take a look at this one. This is an abnormal alignment of the neck. So the red line represents where the neck should be. The neck alignment should be just like that. The normal cervical lordosis. It approximates the segment of a circle. The dashed black line here, so that dashed line there, it represents this person's x-ray. Now you'll see how the person has a a uh, reversal of the cervical curve over here and a forward uh, portion going at the top area. So it's creating this indentation, if you will. The cervical spine is actually reversed in the opposite direction against this natural curve. That's very significant. Over time, that will lead to degeneration of the joints, degeneration of the vertebral bodies, and also degeneration of the discs and also bulging. So I want you to remember this because I'm gonna talk about this later on as well. So let me show you what this looks like also on uh, an MRI picture. Now, this is a different poster, also provided by Chiropractic Biophysics or Ideal Spine. Um, uh, that group there, it's a great group of uh, researchers and uh, technique seminar uh, teachers. Anyways, this poster here, uh, on this side, you'll see an abnormal curve. Now, if you remember from the previous segment, the neck should be a circular shape, approximates the segment of a circle. That's what that red line represents, the normal alignment of the neck from the side position, this person's facing that way. And then this dashed black line over here represents the patient's alignment. You'll notice here where this yellow dotted line is that there is a, a decrease in disc height. So that can, can potentially be a disc bulge problem. Now, what area is that? So here's C1, C2, C3, C4, C5, C6. I'm not surprised that C5, C6 is actually circled. It happens to be the most commonly degenerated area of the cervical spine or the neck because it's where the apex or the peak of that neck curve is, where its most mobility is, the likelihood of more repetitive trauma over time, and also degeneration can lead to these problems. Over here on this side is an, an MRI. Now, this MRI shows, again, the neck from this side facing that way, and you'll see the spinal cord on the inside, and then you'll see the vertebral bodies over here, and then you'll see how the spine is also out of position. It's leaning forward in this case, and there's spurs occurring on the vertebral bodies over here. The disc spaces are also decreased, and there's a bulging that's occurring. So this disc actually is coming out bulging and denting into the fecal sac. You may have heard that on your MRI. Decreasing the flow of cerebral spinal fluid is actually blocking that, possibly irritating the spinal cord and any spinal nerve roots that come out of that area, which can cause a whole bunch of symptoms, which I'll talk about in the next section. Okay, so what are some causes of C5, C6 disc bulge or disc bulge in any part of the cervical spine, the neck? Well, obviously one uh, significant cause can be some type of traumatic event such as a car accident, a whiplash injury, um, a sporting event or sporting injury where a head impacts either another body or boards, the ground, some kind of traumatic incident to the head and neck area can, act, can actually cause an in instant disc bulge situation. Um, other, other scenarios can be trauma over time, repetitive minor trauma that accumulates over, tra over time you know, repetitive bending, repetitive um, positions, you know, through work or trades, uh, labor, uh, that causes the neck to be positioned in, in a different uh, awkward position over time can actually deteriorate those discs, uh, cause them to tear and eventually bulge. 
Um, another factor can be posture. Posture is very, very important. There should be a normal neutral posture of the spine and when a spine and also the body frame. And when the body and spine is in a normal neutral position, the discs are well maintained and can and actually take the load and impact of the body's weight uh, uh, against gravity. But when posture begins to uh, slouch or deteriorate or there's that forward head position that occurs and accumulates over time, can actually wear down these discs and eventually cause them to tear and eventually bulge. And another one which is commonly missed is a misalignment of the spine. Now I showed you in the previous segments what a misalignment of the spine looks like on those pictures and posters. So when the spine is misaligned through different causes like we talked about just recently, then over time that misalignment will, will distress or insult that disc and damage it slowly or repetitively over the years and decades and eventually can cause that disc bulge to pursue over time as well. So knowing that, it can actually help dictate what the course of care or treatment will be, which I'll talk about in a moment. Now before I talk about the different type of treatment options and how we help people with disc bulges in our office, like C5, C6 disc bulge or any herniated disc of the cervical spine, let me address first some of the potential symptoms that can relate it. Now, as you heard earlier, um, that many people have disc bulges and they're asymptomatic and sometimes they're just found incidentally through different studies or examinations or, or images. Uh, but sometimes they do cause symptoms and it can be very, very severe, very, very debilitating. Of course, it can cause uh, symptoms like neck pain and neck pain can be uh, associated with inflammation and that causes a tremendous amount of muscle stiffness and muscle guarding the neck. So these can be associated with disc bulges like muscle tightness and muscle stiffness. There can be limited mobility in the actual neck where the person can actually move their neck very very slowly and in a limited range or up and down flexion extension or, or even tilting is actually very limited uh, we talked about muscle spasms muscle tightness arm pain arm pain is is uh, associated with disc bulges in the neck such as c5 c6 disc bulge why because the nerves of the lower neck such as c5 c6 area they lead into the shoulders into the hands into the fingers so they can cause things like a numbing effect a tingling effect symptoms that, 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 may, that may appear or seem to be like carpal tunnel type syndromes. So um, symptoms. So uh, anyone that has tingling in the fingers or numbing sensation in the fingers needs to have their spine addressed and checked and ha have these disc bulges ruled out. Um, there can be weakness, weakness in the muscles or weakness in the grip strength. We test for this in our, in our office when people present with these type of symptoms. So people are dropping things or can't grip things very well and there's weakness in one arm compared to the other arm. And um, then we check things like uh, the neurology, so reflexes. Uh, now these, are, these may not be things that you may notice, but um, there are signs that there could be potential nerve damage due to a C5, C6 disc or any, any other disc bulge in the cervical spine. So uh, altered uh, deep tendon reflexes. Uh, um, and then um, altered light touch sensation, which is decreased or diminished. And of course, at its worst uh, level, um, you know, uh, the muscles in the arm begin to weaken because of, of too much of this damage. So those are some potential symptoms and signs that are associated with C5, C6 disc bulge. Okay, what are the possible uh, treatments related to or for C5, C6 disc bulges? And uh, I, I truly believe that uh, someone should have an object, uh, objective of trying to avoid surgery at, at all costs. That should be the last resort. Of course, unless it's a, a clinical emergency or a clinical urgency uh, that requires surgery, I get that. But in many cases, patients don't present in with a clinical emergency that requires surgery in an office like a chiropractic office or a general practitioner's medical doctor's office. So surgery, uh, even though it's on the table as an option, should be the last resort. Some people take medications or have injections done with their medical doctors or medical specialists. Those are course of options. Some, most people don't like that. Many people tell me that they want to avoid injections in their neck or medications uh, such as anti-inflammatories or painkillers or opioids uh, because you know the potential side effects and they're not truly correcting the underlying cause of the problem which can be a spinal um, problem like we talked about earlier. So what else do you have? There are conservative options. So um, the most the most important thing I can suggest is to have the spine assessed properly with an upright x-ray and determine what the alignment of the spine is if it's altered like I showed you in the previous uh, segment earlier on those x-ray pictures and MRI pictures. Because if it is, then one treatment option is to apply corrective techniques to help restore the spine in the neck to a normal curvy position or normal spinal alignment. And one technique that allows that to happen, uh, provides that, is corrective chiropractic care. Chiropractic care traditionally has helped many, many people with uh, disc complaints and, and neck complaints and symptoms related to C5, C6 disc bulge. But 
Corrective Chiropractic Care really aims to restore that spinal alignment, reduce the insult on the disc, improve posture, and help eliminate some of those pains and symptoms and inflammations associated with that disc bulge damage in the neck. Other things to consider are uh, a multimodal program of care. In addition to corrective chiropractic care, you wanna do things like attraction. Now, sometimes there's a decompression style traction that really works to help decompress those nerves that are causing the radicular or arm symptoms, like the numbing and tingling uh, effect. We do a lot of that work in our office. People love it, they get great results in reducing their arm pains that can be associated with disc degeneration in the neck or disc bulge in the neck. Uh, we do extension traction of the neck in our office. Um, there's some uh, home exercises people can do for extension traction and then in office, more elaborate in office spinal correction protocols and traction protocols that we do. There's postural correction exercises that are important. There's um, also um, strengthening and uh, strengthening the muscles of, of the neck, stretching tight muscles and also mobility work. These are all different conservative uh, methods in a multimodal care plan in addition to corrective chiropractic care that will really help to uh, reduce the symptoms associated with C5, C6 disc bulge. So there you have it. I hope you found this video useful about C5, C6 disc bulge treatment without surgery, different options that are available, how cons conservative corrective chiropractic care, which is what we do in our office, uh, may help with someone that has symptoms associated with C5, C6 disc, disc bulge, uh, the kind of symptoms that are associated, the types of causes, and you know the, the key thing like I said is, is avoiding surgery at all possible by trying as many conservative options as possible and um, if you haven't investigated corrective chiropractic care let me know uh, if there's a way I can help refer you to a corrective chiropractor in your city because we do have access to directories of corrective chiro chiropractic care chiropractors uh, also I would love to hear your comments if you enjoyed the video let me know in the video the comments below and uh, throw some thumbs up. And if you know someone that may actually benefit from this, do share with, with them. That's the best way to get this message out to more people is by you sharing it to them. Sometimes the YouTube algorithm doesn't get out to all the people that may want this video or need this video. So do share it with people, in, a, a family, friends, uh, pl plug it into your playlist. And uh, of course, I wanna hear some comments. Uh, let me know what you liked about it. Let me know what you didn't like about it so I can make some changes and improvements on the next video. And then look out for a future video that I'm gonna talk about uh, specific exercises for C5, C6 disc bulge. This is Dr. Walter Salubro, and I'll see you on the next video. To learn more about how corrective chiropractic care at Back to Health Chiropractic Center can help you with your chronic pain problem, visit www.ibthcc.com. Back to Health Chiropractic Center is located at 20 Cranston Park Avenue, number 6, Vaughan, Ontario, L6A2W2.